was a couple. Actually, it was a couple Instagram pages. The, the word the word bespoke comes from Old England. Uh, way back when, you'd go into a shop, and they'd have the bolts of fabric lining the walls, mm -hmm. and you'd go in and you'd say, "I want this fabric," and they'd pull that off, and that's what they're making your suit with. And then they'd put a little tag on it, and uh, you'd come back and get fitted later. And so, if anybody else came into the shop between when you came back then they would say, no, that this one be spoken for. It's a, it's a, it's a bespoke suit. Gotcha. I like that. That's yeah. Awesome. So no, no one else can have it. It's yours. That's cool. All right, and guys, now, I'm going to roll race on the count of three. Give me a clap. Does everybody have their phones in vibration mode? Mm -hmm. Mine actually is sitting on a hard surface, too. And if anybody walks in, you need to get up. There's no worries. We can, we can cut it out. Cut and clip. Yeah. yeah. Alright, uh, hands in the air. It's right. pretty good, first try. <laughs> it's an omen. Does, does that mean we're allowed to... Roll Here, Pablo, let me give you my phone. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Thanks. Alright. All right. My name is Chris Mealy, this is... Tyler Harris. And this is... I'm Josh Bryant. And this is uh, episode something of the Bespoke Life. It'll either be the second or third episode. And we're here to talk about style and shoes. And these two guys <laughs> are some great resources, I think, for a different kind of style. I've noticed Tyler on Instagram, especially with the hashtag... Uh, KOTD a lot lately and the and the shoes that you're posting and you told me about Josh yep. and his shop which I knew nothing about and I think it's really cool that led us to come here to do this episode and uh, I would say tell us a little bit about your background okay. and like what you do professionally yeah. and uh, how that what that is. So I'm in the insurance business, and um, so obviously it's all about sneakers. Yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it really doesn't make any sense um, from the outside looking in. And so I have two insurance agencies. We've got over 200 agents across the country. Um, sold life insurance myself for the last four years. Uh, more now into the coaching, training, leading our, our agents uh, so that they can perform better and uh, make more money for themselves, their families, and then ultimately for the company. And so with that, um, kind of expanded into a lot of, really dove head first into a lot of stuff on social media, yeah. um, documenting my life over the last two years, um, a couple podcasts, daily vlogs, weekly vlogs, things like that. Um, so that really you know, brings us to, to where we are now. And the reason why I think this podcast um, is happening is because I'm, I've always been a person that enjoyed style, mm -hmm. um, fashion. Um, take it all the way back to uh, the best dressed, voted best dressed in high school. Yeah. Literally, <laughs> literally, literally, which I always kind of like, thought that was kind of lame at the time. <laughs> um, but I guess it kind of makes sense looking back. Um, it's just always kind of been my thing. I don't know. Um, I've always been one that, that cared about it, I guess. I think that's probably the most. And, and some people would look at that and they'd be like, oh, that's lame. Like he cares about what he wears. But I don't, <laughs> I, I, that's fine. I just always have. I've always kind of had a knack for, um, you know, whether it was, you know, streetwear or whether it was like suited up like your, you know, uh, audience primarily is going to be um, whatever that was being able to mix and match things and just make it work um, but always trying to incorporate something new trying to stay not necessarily like cutting edge um, because I think a lot of times that gets a little crazy um, <laughs> but always staying somewhat um, up to date with what's going on in the fashion world and uh, but mainly just focusing on like what I like and so when it comes to like sneakers and we can talk about that um, I don't know a lot about sneakers I just know when I see one, if I like it or not. And then for me, it goes back to really being a kid. Like I grew up in a good house. Um, you know, we, did, we certainly didn't struggle uh, by any means, but it was a big deal getting a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Like getting a new pair of shoes was like that, like, you know, starting the school year yeah. or like maybe your birthday, maybe like, you know, Christmas, something. And like, I still remember that feeling of putting on a new pair of shoes and it was just like the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> um, 
And so as, as my business has progressed and, and become successful financially, I just wanted to feel that like every day. <laughs> <laughs> And sometimes it feels like it is every day, um, <laughs> which my wife would probably tell you it is. But um, I don't know. I just like I, I just enjoy um, keeping up with it. Like for me, it's just it's like if if I were to have an addiction, I think it's not a bad one. Uh, I quit drinking like sixteen months ago, and so yeah. that's the way I rationalize it with my spouse. I think is that you I'm know like I don't drink that. anymore. I don't do drugs. Like I just buy sneakers. <laughs> And um, and that at least makes her feel a little better at the time when I come walking in with like four boxes. Does she say, "Oh, okay"? She's into it now. Like she's she's actually gotten gotten into it herself a little bit, which I don't want to have happen. Josh, <laughs> Josh wants to have that happen, but I don't want to have this. That's like I'm looking at doubling my costs here. Um, so when did you start? I mean, it started slowly, from what I can remember seeing on social media, which is occasionally, yeah, and then it became more of part of your image and wardrobe. I mean, a lot of that has to do with supply and access. Okay. And so, like, before, it was just whatever they had a finish line, foot locker, you know, foot action, whatever. Um, I was really big into Air Max. Like, I've I'm, I'm always been a Nike guy, like, through and through. The only shoes that I wear that aren't Nike are probably Yeezy, which is Adidas, but, like, I don't even, in my brain, that doesn't even process that it's Adidas. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It's just the most comfortable shoes I own, basically. The Yeezys are? Yeah, by far, um, some of the most comfortable that I own. But everything else is all Nike, all Nike. And so it used to be all Air Max, like every kind of Air Max you can imagine. And then when they started remaking a lot of the old Air Max, like with the fly knit, when they started doing that, which all of a sudden became like an older looking Air Max, but now was like crazy comfortable. I got really into that. Yeah. Um, but just like I said, supply and just having access, like there was a store down the road that opened up, this store opened up, and now I had the ability to reach out and say like, hey, I, these, are, these are what I'm looking for, something I see on Instagram, like, hey, you know, can you get this? When they started saying yes, and I was like, oh, crap. Because <laughs> <laughs> now, now it opened up Pandora's box. I was like, well, if you can have anything, what would you just want? Go. Yeah. And so uh, I think that's probably why it picked up some. It was just because uh, gaining relationships like Josh – how did you um, connect with Josh originally? Just Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah, just Instagram. Just stumbled across the page. And I was like, I was looking at the spot. I'm like, I think that's right over there across the street from Paula's place. And I and, uh, came by here, and sure enough, it uh, worked out. So when you, when you want something, you play, it sounds like there's two main places. You just place calls and. Yeah, tell them what it you're a DM. For. it's just a DM, really. Wow. It's typically just a DM or a text message. Just. Um, you know, the crazy thing now is like literally they come out with a new freaking Jordan like every 38 seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like legitimately you cannot keep up, period. Um, like when we walked in here a second ago and I was just like, hey, <laughs> what's going on with those turbo greens? Uh, and uh, like, but a new one came out today and a new one will come out tomorrow. Like it's like, <laughs> it's crazy. But um, to me it's cool. Like because it's something interesting. Like, you know, for me, like even with what I'm wearing now, like you can wear a suit coat. And I got these Jordan 11 cap and gowns on that for me are like dress shoes because they're like all black and they got a little patent leather yeah, on it. Yeah. Um, and so like I, a lot of what I do now is like mixing and matching. So like I'll wear like a suit coat. I may even wear a tie, but I'll have like these guys on, which like stand out like crazy. Um, which, you know, those are some of my, probably my all time favorite. I was going to say, do you um, have favorites? Shoes. That's, these ones that I brought here um, are some of the favorites that I wear like all the time. Like so these... Um, UNC Jordan off whites. Um, those are probably one of the more expensive shoes that I have. Um, but these Yeezy Seven Hundred Wave Runners, like those are insanely comfortable. Really the cool story about those. My wife got like actually like um, did one of the lotteries and got me those. So it was like the first time she ever got me a gift that I kept. Um, <laughs> I'm a really bad gift getter. Um, and then these uh, React. Um, are insanely comfortable. I've got like three or four colors of those. He's got a bunch of those here. Um, they're crazy comfortable. They weigh like nothing, and um, and I love them. So I don't know. It's just um, it's always something new. So and it was it was Tyler. It was your idea to come here and do this conversation, which I thought was really cool to be able to talk to you also, because he self admittedly doesn't know that much about shoes, and I would assume. I just met you. I don't know. I would assume you know a lot about shoes with this being a shop. It's all stepping stones. We're, it's all a learning curve for, my, for myself also. So, yeah. I mean, I'm still learning all the different brands and everything and how to tell fakes from, you know, legits. So it's, it's just stepping stones. And this, 
you opened this one again? January 3rd. And yes, awesome. how did you end up in this business? How did, you were doing something unrelated, and now you're in shoes and vintage and uh, really cool um, athletic wear type and throwback type clothing. How did you end up in that? For me personally, the whole thing for myself was having the key access for, to unlock those doors. That was my hmm. whole thing. So it being mine, I was just going to strive to make everything work. Were you, did you, did you uh, is, like the vintage stuff, that's always been your style? Right. See, my, my grandma actually took me to Goodwills and all the thrift stores mm -hmm. and everything like that. So it was always imprinted in my mind. I just never thought that, you know, this would come out of it all. <laughs> no idea. That's cool. So what is it, when we talked about this a minute ago, what's, what's your style? What type of shoes do you like to wear? Uh, me personally, I'd go plain Jane. Uh, the flashy shoes is really cool and all, but it, you know, it's trying it, to say you don't get high in your own supplies. That they <laughs> pretty much. Exactly. It, exactly. It. Cause if, I, if, if you wear the, you know, the product, then yeah. you're going to sell the product. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'd, I'd rather just dress as plain as possible. Vintage is the way to go in my opinion. Yeah. How, how often do you look for, sh for shoes for yourself? It's very rare. Yeah. I'm, I'm the guy that'll wear, you know, four, four pair of shoes a year. Yeah. I'm used to, you know, growing up and having one pair of shoes for the whole year. So, yeah, can't forget where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so he mentioned Yeezys being the most comfortable. I'm with him. Yeah. Yes, sir. Why? What do you know? Why? Why it's, is it's the so? boost, man? The yeah. boost is the way to go. You'll hear checks over stripes all day, but that's that's not our motto here. <laughs> 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 okay, so the um, I, I read up a little bit about Yeezys recently, uh, just because I didn't know that much about them, and it seems like there's uh, there's there's a pretty strong market for them that. They run out of them. Some of them are hard to find. Supply and demand, yes, yeah. sir. I mean, once the Yeezy actually drops, you're talking minutes it's going to sell out. But the good part about it is, is with us, we're getting restocks constantly. So okay. the demand is definitely there. The supply is there as well. And you, and you said earlier it, it's all about the connections and knowing where to it's find It's all about them. who you know yeah. and how well you know them. And you know the right people? We're getting there. <laughs> It's interesting, man, like with, with demand, because that to me is a lot of the allure to it, is being able to get something that was rare. And like I have people like in New York and Miami, um, and, we're, and we'll talk through DM like all the time, like, you know, were you able to cop those, you know, whatever that came out on Tuesday? I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. He's like, yeah, I got them, and Jay didn't. And, and like, it's just kind of this thing, like, for example, when the Yeezy 350, when the um, Sesames came out, I feel like everybody had them. Like, uh, they just did, they put too much out there. And I bought them, like, the day they came out, just because, like, like, I'm just going to go get them. But then I literally sold them like a couple of days later because like my business partner had them, his freaking twelve year old son had them. Like every, next thing I know, like everybody had them. I was like, well, I don't really like them that much because like everybody like, like everybody had them. Like the day they came out, um, versus like the statics, which I thought I brought, but I didn't. Um, the statics they didn't release as much, and so it was a little bit tougher to get. And like with a lot of the off whites, are really hard to get. Like I tried to get them forever before I'd met Josh. Um, Finally found a place uh, down in Miami that happened to have my size, and they had two pair, and I was able to finally get uh, a couple pair of them. But like for a while, like I couldn't find them anywhere. And there is so is a gigantic market out there of fake, uh, fake shoes, fake sneakers, uh, and it's insanely hard to tell. Like I have a pair of fake off whites um, that I had bought from a guy, and and I didn't know that they were fake when I bought them. Um, but come to find out they're fake. And the reason we were able to find out was like so tiny. Mm -hmm. It was like like two words on the insole were like a smaller type font than it should have been. And like a little bit of speckling on like some of the ink on the in, inside um, of the foot, uh, which shouldn't happen. And like little things like that. But like no one, no one would ever be able to tell unless you like really, really knew your stuff. Um, but that to me is the interesting part of it is just – is the supply and demand and you know as soon as they as soon as they hit you know who gets them first and a lot of that you know it's com you know, like that competitive nature of like oh i was able to get them and, um, that makes it fun like to me it's just fun you know so you you prefer the more rare over yeah. the over the common 
Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Like to me, like I mean, I, I rarely buy any more. I rarely buy sneakers that I could get at like finish line or or champs or something. Like every now and then, like with Jordan ones, just because I like like I wear Jordan ones, like kind of like these, but um, like those ones we were just looking at, those turbo greens. Like I'll wear those with jeans and a coat like every day, and so they come out with a different color like every five seconds. And so with those, I can find like at a place like that. But any, any, anything else, it's going to be something that's a little bit more hard to find or a little bit more limited release or at least geographically, it's a little bit more hard. Like if you lived in L.A. or if you lived in New York City, it wouldn't be so hard to find. You could go to a store you know, easily. But uh, that's what I was glad about Josh opening up the spot is because now it gives Greenville access that normally you'd have to live in a bigger city to, to get. What's the hardest shoe or style you've come across that's been the hardest to find? Probably more of the West Coast style. Okay. You know, because a lot of people on the East Coast really don't, they see it, but they, they've never actually been involved in it, if you know what I mean. So what we did is we went through every, every resale shop's pages and everything, took little pieces from everybody and just incorporated it into our own thing. So we give a little piece of the West Coast and the East Coast. What's the most commonly, is there a most common request for shoe style from yes, people sir. that walk in? Yes, sir. Mainly people want off-whites. That's, that's the main shoe to go for. And my man Tyler has a couple pair. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you on a, uh, do you put yourself on a shoe budget, like so many pairs per month? Or no, but I got go? out of the shower the other night and my wife was on the computer on the bed. She's like, uh... Babe, I'm like, yeah. She's like, it would appear as though over the last three weeks you've spent, and it was a lot. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, huh. I guess she was like waiting for me to say something like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. I'm like, huh. And I just kind of walked off. And I was like, and from the bathroom, I was like, is that bad? <laughs> and she just like started laughing. Um, <laughs> Because, again, it's like compared to what? Like I used to spend $200 a night drinking like shots and freaking being an idiot. Yeah. So like that's a pair of shoes. You know, so it's just a, you know, <laughs> it, it, it just depends on what you're comparing it to. But um, one of my biggest fears now is that my wife will one day sell my shoes for how much I told her they cost <laughs> if I were to die, <laughs> which would be a real shame or a real pickup for somebody. <laughs> Uh, I think I read that somewhere about guns. Oh, Some yeah. guy said that about guns one time. It's like, if I die, my greatest fear is that my wife sells all my guns for how much I told her I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hopefully they come here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come yeah. here. Yeah. So uh, a, lot of my, a lot of my clients and what I do, they'll comment on uh, their wife doesn't mind what they spend money on because it just means that they can spend money, the wife can spend money on what they want to. Yeah. If the husband's doing whatever, does your wife ever pull that card on you where she's like, oh, you did that, so yeah. I can do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Usually it's with like Lululemon, like yoga stuff because she wears that all the time. The other day. She spent like a thousand bucks in Lululemon. She um, was checking out. The guy was like, "Did you need? A, did you need a bunch of new clothes?" And she was just like, "Yeah." She's like, "Well, my husband comes home with like three or four pairs of shoes every day." <laughs> and uh, and he go and he said, "What does your husband look like? Does he have a beard?" <laughs> so I guess I guess he like followed on Instagram. Or something. And so yeah, I mean, she can certainly use that, which justifiably so. And when you're doing the hashtag KOTD now, yeah. do, you, do you try and uh, kind of get yourself on a schedule for what you're kind of showing every day? Yeah. Um, it started out, Pablo, um, my videographer and the director of our vlog, he said this idea of, of doing it because I was inevitably in my Instagram stories, I was each day like, you know, having a minute somehow taking a little picture or a boomerang or a video or something. He wanted to take it to the next level and do like a post with my shoes each day or the kicks of the day. Um, and so it has quickly become this like creative process to where we're like, how do we one up each day and get more and more creative using like green screens and all these after effects? And it's a crazy <laughs> process now. Um, and so sometimes like 
I'll wear some shoes to the office and then I'll take another pair too so that we can try to get, you know, a little bit uh, ahead of the curve so we're not always like doing it like that day. Yeah. So usually it's like the kicks that were the day before, um, but sometimes it's the, it's the exact same day. But, you know, the ultimate, like it was strategic in what we're doing with that. Like I hope to one day be sponsored by an organization that's sending me shoes for free. Like that's, Who, that's the end, end result. What, what kind of organization would be interested in the, the kind of representation that you're doing? It, it just depends. I mean, like, you know, I know people that have deals with Nike, okay. um, because they're at that level, not yeah. at that level yet. Um, but you know, like, a a place like what would be a good, like complex would be a good example. Sure. So we're actually in talks with complex right now. And so the way that conversation looks is you know, I've got screenshots of my guy and um, the main guy from complex going back and forth. And like today he sent him a screenshot of me because the hashtag complex, I was the fourth post in the top posts under hashtag complex. Yeah. And I was, I had like three posts in the top 12. So he's like, screenshotting that stuff and sending it to him yeah. like hey my guy's doing these videos they're getting a lot of traction he's like four of his posts are in the top 12 of all of the hashtag of complex so it kind of like starts to build that little bit of awareness to where they know if they send me a shoe for free or whether it's like stadium goods or whether it's a place like this or whether it's um you know sneaker freakers like huge on on uh, instagram um with just all these articles and you know, if they were to send me a shoe and it said kicks of the day brought to you by complex yeah. and it's got their logo on there, then that's, they know how many impressions, they know how many people are seeing that we can track how many are going to, you know, the link from my bio, like mm -hmm. we can, all this stuff, all this data is, you know, we can, you can track it all. Um, so it's just the influence, influencer marketing, you know, model, uh, so that they can reach specific geographic areas, specific niche markets um if they see me as someone that's big in the insurance world or big in the entrepreneur influencer world but also has this sneaker side then then that's interesting to them whereas it doesn't really make all that much sense on my po on my you know profile as to like all this like business motivation some fitness stuff and it's like sneakers but it's all <laughs> strategically trying to find these lanes um that we're posting in and so you know who knows what will come from it um but you know ult ultimately so, so really this is all want just something to pay for this problem <laughs> this is an investment <laughs> into your building your business that's the way i look at it that's what it is yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's better and you don't mind that he's investing in that right oh, not at all <laughs> not at all uh i actually i had a question for for you also uh you open the spot you've been open a minute. I mean, you, you just opened recently. Right, yes, sir. And it, things are going well, staying busy. I'm assuming it seem, you know, seems, uh, from what I've seen on your Instagram profile, that you're uh, doing a lot of different styles of shoes. And where does most of your clientele come from? Are the people that walk in, the people come to you to Instagram, through Instagram, like Tyler did? Uh, most of it is word of the mouth. Of Social media is playing a big part in you know, getting a lot of people in here as well. Um, but right now, like I say, we're still in the stepping stone area, so it, it's snowballing. Mm -hmm. It will get there eventually to where whatever I have in mind. But like I say, one step at a time. Yeah. Greenville's an interesting market, um, too. It's an interesting size, and I think it, it takes being thoughtful and strategic about it to be able to carve out a niche inside this size market. So you have to like, so it, it takes effort. Um, you can't just pop up a shoe store and vintage uh, apparel store and, and just expect people to walk in yeah. because the market size makes it to where you have to go out and find them and be more proactive and be putting out content, you know, daily so that people can find you. Um, rather than just walking in the door like, you know, you put a finish line in at the mall and they can just know that there's going to be enough foot traffic, people are going to stop by. Um, but you got to be a little bit more proactive on, on this side, it seems. That's, That's pretty cool. much it. I really, I've, I've been meaning actually to come by, especially since he told you, and uh, that's why I asked you about the, the Jordan 6s that were my favorite shoe uh, growing up, and I never had a pair. Uh, they were just always my favorite shoe, and... Uh, I didn't really jump on it fast enough. What What is the, the secondary shoe? So after a release like that, what does the secondary shoe market look like if, for say, someone like me, and I want to get a, 
a pair of these and they're sold out in the stores and websites are you know saying they're gone what what does that look like on the secondary market well for yourself you'd be in the clear cuz you know me so i'd be able to, <laughs> i'd be able to track them so down so everybody really. needs to know exactly. you exactly okay. that's that's the main thing it's all about who you know and if you know somebody <laughs> if you're into shoes and clothing then you want to know somebody that's into shoes and clothing as well so best of both worlds and you you can make it happen yes sir you that's know the, the people that's awesome that's what I saw. I, I, after I went, I went to a couple stores that day out of curiosity, and they were all sold out except for like one pair in one size. And so I left the stores and I checked on my phone online, and uh, the website said, you know, it's no longer available or all the sizes were gone. And uh, I just thought, okay, I look forward to when we meet and talk because I'm really curious how that works. And I looked at some some other websites and. They showed the uh, the second. Uh, I guess it's people selling their shoes. Uh, what was it? A uh, uh, kicks on fire. I think. Oh, yeah. What what is that? That's the true resale market. We're okay. we're involved in the resale market as well. But how I price everything is to where we're not we're not trying to cutthroat anybody. Okay. We're we're trying to make sure it, the shoes and the items are available for everybody. What was the what happened recently with StockX? What did they recently do for resellers? Didn't they didn't they add some type of fee or some type of well, most, cut that like was actually like a substantially like really affected people? Well, most of the websites are actually impl or in, implying implementing yeah. a yeah. lot of those uh, type of fees because the resellers are making you know four hundred percent off a pair of shoes. Yeah, so it makes sense for you know a company like that to go ahead and throw their fees so they can make something as well. The other thing about that though is like. To me, yeah, there's going to be the handful of times where, like, you know a shoe's coming out, you really want it for whatever reason, you take the time, you go through it. But a lot of times, sneaker, like, a lot of times it's going to be an impulse buy. Like, you see it, you're like, wow, I like that, I want it, and you buy it. And, like, that's been my problem. Like, I've gotten a few pairs of shoes through, like, StockX, which they're probably the biggest, wouldn't you think, them right. or GOAT. Um, like, StockX... You know, you place the order, you buy it, then the reseller has to send that shoe to StockX and they make sure and check that everything's up to code and they're not fake and that it's in the right condition. And then they send it from StockX to you. Next thing, it's like a month later, you get the shoe. And like, I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> and like, if I saw a shoe that I wanted, I, I wasn't exactly thinking like, man, that'd be great to have in April. Like, <laughs> you know, like when I could just shoot Josh a DM and be like, hey, can you get these? And he's like, come by Friday. You know, like, it's just, really? so that process, so, wow. it, it really is who you know, because I'll give you another good story. So my business partner, Joseph, you know Joe, yeah. um, his son, uh, Jack, wanted the Yeezy, the Sesames. And they went to every store in Greenville, <laughs> Couldn't find them. He wanted them for Christmas. That's all they wanted. Like, just wanted these shoes. He's like, man, we went to every single store this weekend, and I wasn't able to find them. I'm like, cool. And so I sent one DM to a store down the road before Josh opened up. Sent one DM. 45 minutes later, the guy drove them to my office. <laughs> delivered. <laughs> I went out to the parking lot, gave him the cash, got the box, and walked to Joseph. And I was like, here you go. And Joseph's <laughs> wife's. Kim, who also works with us, been there like, how, how did this, like, I sent him this weekend, and he went to every store, and he couldn't find it, and 45 minutes later, they're now in his, in his hand. I'm like, it's because it's all about who you know. So um, we all need to know a Josh. Yeah, yeah for sure. It makes it happen. It's uh, so cool. It's interesting. It is. I really, I, and the, one of the reasons why I want to do this, I mean, I just, I really like different styles. Yeah. And I, and I like that even before, you know, now it's uh, kind of a business. Uh, okay. Uh, now that it's a business, I, even before when it was kind of uh, more of a hobby and just doing it slowly, I really enjoyed that you were kind of doing your own thing and kind of having fun with it. I oh, I it's still not a business. It's still not a business. <laughs> I promise you. If it's a business, then we are going under. That is for sure. Only outflow, no inflow. We're looking good going under, I guess. <laughs> but, and, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, um, to me, the vast majority of people all look the same. Yeah. Especially in the business world. Like, they all look the same. And so, you know, to me, it's all about finding a way to stand out a little bit. 
and whether it's like throwing on like a little you know pocket square that that's different or whether it's shoes like whatever it is to me it's you know, like it's creating figuring out what your style is and um and kind of making it a part of you it's, it's almost like personal branding yeah it's just like your style is is kind of your f- most forward facing customer facing uh <clears throat> brand that you have and uh you can that first impression is so valuable and um you can leave people with a reason to remember you like if you got these bright blue and orange <laughs> lace shoes on with a big red tag on it people are just gonna remember that you know they're gonna be like i don't know what this guy had on his feet but it was interesting and it didn't seem to go with anything else he was wearing ready one two three uh what what is with the the tag on the shoes the red tag it's um it's a um evacuation like a like you pull a tag and you like shoot out oh yes <laughs> inflates and pull you up to the <laughs> surface inflate. of the water it's an inflatable tag <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> <Feet first. laughs> yeah i don't know what, i don't know where i don't know what it is where it came from i just know um you know virgil from louis vuitton when he collaborated with nike on these off whites a lot of his stuff is very like industrial like raw feeling like literally some of the stuff like you'll have a hoodie that says hoodie and it's like four grand <laughs> and like like legit like like a wallet that says wallet and it's like 1800 bucks um and on the tag it just says like um Shoot. it says off white nike care of virgil i mean it's the basic information but it's just it's kind of his style it's kind of like his uh how would you describe it just just like you said with the pocket square it's his own thing yeah, you know he true. wants to stand out so i believe that he put the tag there because I've never seen another shoe with a tag like that on them. Yeah. I mean, if you look at all the rest of the shoes, they, they look nothing like the off-white. So if you want to set a statement and stand out, that's definitely the way to go. Does he have other shoes that he does that with the tag? Every single one. And there's, what, like eight or nine off-white Nike? I think there's um, not 100%. I think it's about 12, okay. 12, 13. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it's interesting. Like, and it's it's extremely inconvenient <laughs> like oh like, i mean legit like it just sticks out but like people know when they see it they know they you know they know what it is and just one of those things it makes it rare <laughs> who knows what's one of your another question just popped in my, in my mind what's one of your favorite shoes to look for do you have something that when someone asks you kind of get excited about finding it that goes again with the off whites. Yeah, because they're so there's such a high demand for them, and it's rare you can actually find them for a decent price that somebody's going to be willing to pay for them. So those those are the ultimate Easter egg. Okay. The reality is, I mean, like if I weren't if I didn't just love the shoe, like I wear all my shoes. Yeah, every shoe that I buy, I wear. I throw the box away. I know, like people hate them. Like it's not a you're not supposed to you're supposed to keep the box. Yeah. I, I throw every box away because I wear them. Occasionally, I'll buy a pair that I'm like I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear these or not, so I'll keep the box because I might sell them. Um, and I haven't gotten to the level where I'll buy one to wear and and uh, and one to keep. Um, but <laughs> like I wear them all. And um, yeah, I mean it's you know for me that's that's the fun part about it is like I'm not doing this, but where I was going with that is this, you can make a ton of money if you just hold on to these things. Like the freaking off whites, like the, the, um, the red ones, like I've seen like crazy prices, like four grand I've seen for the, like there's shoes that like retail for 300 bucks that are literally right now on stock X for like seven grand, eight grand, nine grand, 10 grand. Like those freaking crazy back to the future Nikes. I saw them the other day for like 18 grand. Like, <laughs> And these these shoes like retail for like three fifty, four fifty. It's it's nuts. Um, but there's something to me that's cool about the fact that like I bought a pair of um, Jordan Elevens the other day. Um, I can't remember which ones they were. They're black and red. But this guy that I bought them from, he literally bought them in two thousand and eight. Put them in his closet, and never put them on his feet. And I bought them from him, and I just like it's almost like wine. You know, yeah. Like I think it's. I just thought it was cool the fact that this dude had the wherewithal to buy them and keep them and never wear them, and they were brand new shoes, but they're 11 years old, but they're never they've never been worn. Like that's crazy to me. So, 
like stuff like that just makes it kind of makes it interesting. Um, it is kind of like collecting wine or collecting anything. I mean, yeah. it's it's just collecting. Like that that to me is all it is. But um, not collecting to show, collecting to actually wear. Yeah, so you wear all of them. Yeah, all of them. Do you have a, a big, huge, elaborate shoe rack in your closet now? It's it's growing. Like we we keep adding racks and adding racks on the like bottom and on the adding shelves and walls and all. The, I mean, it's it's nuts now. Um, it's actually really inconvenient. Um, my wife, that's like the only thing my wife doesn't not a big fan of. You need to build a separate closet for them. I know, but I don't know. We'll see. It's so, not, uh, not stopping it down soon. <laughs> <laughs> Would there ever be a time where you said, okay, that's enough. I have enough shoes. I don't know. No. <laughs> I could probably rattle off about 10 pair that I need to have right now. Um, Does Josh have the list of all those? <laughs> no, yeah, he's got some of them. Some, um, some of them are just so crazy expensive. I, I can't justify a lot of it. Like Some of them are just nuts lately. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think there's, there'll always be new stuff coming out. There's always, um, stuff happening. Um, and like, you know, for events and different things, like, I don't know, it's just, it's just fun. So I'm going to keep enjoying it. And you both, you've both mentioned this, uh, and I'll ask you since you have to be able to tell, uh, counterfeits, fake shoes, how do you keep up with knowing the difference and knowing whether like do you ever have you had someone where you've sent out for a shoe for someone it comes in and you look at it and you go no this is a fake one oh yeah it, it definitely happens and they're getting better and better every day that's for sure but that goes again with it's all about who you know if you know a reliable source that gets you know legit shoes non-stop then you're going to continue shopping with that same person and telling the difference between them man it, it's rough i've actually i've bought fakes myself and had no clue hmm. Till somebody I knew a little Someone bit more than myself, points, yeah. and because they me. can fake anything, they can't. They can fake the shoe. They can fake the freaking StockX certificate, the little badge from Stock. Like they can fake all that stuff. Uh, but I think the big thing when you're dealing with somebody like Josh and the people that he's dealing with is like your word is all you have. And if like like someone that's doing that is not going to be around long, yeah. like because as soon as the trust is broken, they're like, oh, I'm never never going to buy anything from that guy again. Um, so I think that's uh, that plays a big a big role, and it, it seems like it's this way in a lot of industries. It, it, I would assume, and I'm asking if it's similar in yours, where uh, it, the the more you, the, the longer you're in that industry, the smaller the world gets, where you kind of know everybody and y'all talk to each other, and kind of if if someone comes in and you know they're the kind of person that's trying to sell that the counterfeit stuff that y'all kind of know talk about. Hey, don't buy, don't get them from this guy. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's exactly how it is. Just like all the rest of the games. So once you get into a certain group, then they're going to flag everyone that does anything shady like that. That's yeah. cool. Sure. Um, what's the next, what's the next shoe? I don't know, man. Uh, I really don't. I mean, I may probably get some of these turbo green Jordan ones <laughs> right now. Probably. Today? <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> it's because they're available. Josh is all right with that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Um, I don't know. I think it's interesting. I think to tie it back into a parallel to what you do, like you're a custom clothier, um, custom suits primarily, right? Suits, sport coats. Yeah, yeah. And so, I think you know you're always trying to give people like a fresh perspective or approach. Some people just know what they want. Yeah. Um, but I think it would be interesting to sprinkle in uh, some sneakers in there yeah. and see what happens um, instead of some, you know, Allen Edmonds or uh, whatever. That's no, and that's actually that's kind of one of the reasons why I thought about this and yeah. why I like what you do because I want to, I want to expand my. So one of the things I do with people is always try to uh, push them out of their comfort zone slowly. Yeah, help them expand and grow, and because I, th I think style should be constantly evolving. Yeah, in whatever your style is, you should. Uh, to me, it's kind of it goes along with personal growth. Like you should just keep sure. exploring, and it's an expression of yourself. And no one, I don't think anybody should be stagnant. Yeah. So that's one thing I've thought about expanding into different, um, different styles for myself, putting into different outfits. The same way that I try to help clients. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you're wearing all blue something. Let's do something green. Yeah. Like, let's go crazy. Um, so that, that color shoe would be yeah. a, a deviation for you. 
I'm just thinking like I'm just envisioning like a lot of your clients. You know, you've got them looking fresh in the boardroom. You know, yeah. And then they're looking fresh like on a date. You know, downtown a pair of dinner jeans, a different kind of shoe. Yeah. yeah. But then all of a sudden they show up to the gym and like some. Some gray, like, Hanes, like, short shorts with, like, <laughs> the, like, dad New Balance, white New Balances on. Yep. And you're like, <laughs> and, and you're like, what happened? Like, what'd you do? To me, it's like the full spectrum of style. Like, yeah. you can look, you can express your uh, style in the gym just as you can uh, in the boardroom. And also, I completely agree with that. I, I, I had one recent client I started working with, well, our conversations go outside of professional into date nights yeah. and um, we've talked a little bit about workout shoes. Yeah. Um, I think he's into like CrossFit stuff. Mm-hmm. So he wears that kind of shoe, but yeah. And I, th- I think that man, and I love the way, like you always have the, <laughs> those shoes on when you go to the gym and yeah. I, mean, I see your, uh, your stories where you're walking up, you, you yeah. wear them to work out in. And yeah. I, I, I like that. I think, also, you know, going to work out, you're still representing yourself. Yeah. And I think it's cool For to sure. be rocking the stylish shoes. Yeah. Rather than. I mean, um, I think that just shows the difference of like, if you like love it and you're not just like buying it for like some social status or yeah. like some like, oh, I got, you know, these shoes. But like, no, like I, I wear them, like wear them out. Like I'm not really all that concerned. Like, like I'll have creases on my you know, toes of my Jordans and it's cause I'm working out at them. Like I really, really will like wear them. Um, I think it's just, I don't know. It's, it's different, but, uh, it makes things interesting for me. Do you have clients that, um, so obviously people come to you for, for rare stuff. Do you have people that work with you where the, anytime they just need any shoe, they just say, Hey, I want this shoe and this size and, like any shoe, you get it for them? Yes, sir. All you got to do is send me your hit list, and I can seek just about anything out. If I, I do focus on rare shoes, but, you know, plain Jane's the, the good way to go, well, too, because yeah, we're all not like. the same. If we all mm-hmm. thought the same, it'd be a little yeah, a little iffy. What's your, uh, what's your, the biggest flip you've ever, you've ever had? Was it biggest on apparel, apparel, or was it on a apparel. shoe? Apparel, yes, sir. What was it? It was a box logo. Box logos retail for about one sixty eight, one seventy eight with shipping. I sold one for five fifty. Where'd you find it? I got it for retail on the. Oh, website. you did. Right. Got it. Wow, that's awesome. What's your biggest like flip? Something you just found like at a Goodwill or like at a consignment or like probably a- vintage, vintage wear. Yeah. I mean, you think you pay like two, three dollars for you mm-hmm. know a T-shirt, but it could be worth you know like say for instance a Tupac shirt could be worth one fifty, two hundred. Yeah. You just paid two hundred, two dollars for it. Mm-hmm. Markup's crazy. Do you do you hit up Goodwill to to shop with to find things for the vintage side? I used to until I, I started getting really pressed for time. So now that I, I've taught a lot of people, a lot of my friends and family how to do it and what the look for i just i let them do it they bring yeah. it all in for me do you find that uh hitting up like bigger cities bigger markets like the different stores that are in those markets yield better uh results well you, you it's, it's really a gamble you never know what you're going to find so i make sure anytime i go out of state i'm definitely checking all the nearest thrifts huh. that's cool so the the vintage stuff you have in here it's sourced by you family friends stuff that you've Got, y'all have gone out and found correct yes sir. thrifted that is awesome that umbro that umbro jacket on the end over there oh those are it's those hot. are coming back um coming back in a major way yeah. i actually mm-hmm. own a couple of those myself for personal. <laughs> yeah. it looks like i, I, I would isn't there an umbro plant in spartanburg i'm pretty sure there used to be there used, used to, to be, be in cherrydale used to oh be really cherrydale? Right. Jeez, is it crazy are they gone are they yeah, I'm pretty sure they're gone. Okay. It was it was when I was a kid. Yeah, that's crazy. Does Umbro exist at all anymore? Oh, um, I think it's mainly like Europe. Europe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's very cool. That's so cool. Well, I so I've I've asked all the questions that I had uh, for you two fellows today. Cool. And so I really appreciate Tyler and Josh both of your time. Absolutely. And. Uh, I've learned some, and I definitely, I do want to get those Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> they are the right place. I do want to get them. Uh, and I, that's what, when I said that I saw them online and shopped around, I was like, no, I'm going to wait until I talk to the guy at Hyped Experience before I do anything. 
So I'm glad uh, you did. Appreciate hey, tell, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. You can find us at Hyped Experience on Instagram and Facebook and in person at 21 Mohawk Drive. Sweet. Drive. Right behind. What did you say we're behind over here? Paula Rallis' new uh, uh, um, design and furniture okay. stores right across the street. Right, out, right off uh, Wade Hampton right over here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which when I saw I saw the address and for us to get over here, I said, oh, they're right there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Right off of Wade Hampton behind uh, where like Community Tap and Billiam. Yep. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate y'all's time, and uh, I look forward to getting those shoes, and I'll see <laughs> Tyler soon at uh, with GBL Hustle. Yep. Next week, next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. Yes, sir. At the Encore Gastro Gastro Lounge. Lounge. Yes, all right. Sir. Well, We'll wrap it up. We'll wrap that up then. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> cool.